Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to episode 90. Oh, fuck, we're at episode 90 of the Spearhead Sundays podcast, and uh, I'm feeling good. You might notice that this podcast sounds a little bit different. I'm hoping that it sounds better because I am using a much better microphone. Um, but also, if you watch on YouTube, you might notice that the podcast also looks a little bit different. Um, this is the very first episode of the Speared Sunnies podcast that I am filming. So if you're listening on iTunes and you uh, have the ability to sit down for a fucking hour to watch me sit down for a fucking hour, uh, check it out on YouTube. And uh, I mean, hopefully this will work. What I've done um, with some of the Patreon money is because uh, I can't stop myself from throwing the money back into into the hole. As soon as I, as soon as the budget increases, I'm like, cool. Now I can spend it on more shit for you guys instead of I don't know a car for me, <laughs> which I desperately fucking need. But I don't know. Uh, this to me, this shit is way more fun than than driving. I assume. I don't know. I, I literally don't know what it's like to drive. I've uh, I'm 23 years old. Don't have my driver's license. Can't afford a car. Um. So if if you if you're looking up to me, well, <laughs> reevaluate your life. <laughs> um, so yeah. Anyway, as I was saying, um, with because of Patreon, you guys supporting me on there, I figured that um, uh, I should upgrade what the podcast not only sounds like, but also figure out a way to film it because that's something that people have been asking for for the longest time, and it's very hard to film a podcast because, well, especially a solo podcast, one, because it's solo, there's no one to fucking help me, and um, two, it's just impossible to find a camera that can record continuously for an hour because really... The way I see it, if I'm filming this shit, I don't want to think about the camera. I don't want to think about it look it looking good or, or whatever. But I managed to find online my uncle, who is a um, he's a sound engineer or a or a recording. I don't know. He's one of those sound cunts. He just knows everything about sound and microphones and equipment and and plugs and cables and and all that kind of shit like that like. I'm recording this at the radio station, and and I reckon sixty percent of the employees here are just those sound cunts. Like they're the, they're the pe- they're just n- like sound nerds. Where because sound is one of the hardest fucking things to figure out because you can't look at it because <laughs> it's sound. Of course you can't see it, fuckhead. But yeah, it's just really difficult to figure out um, how it all works. So, but but in, it's like one in every hundred people is one of those sound cunts that can just figure out this shit and they know how it all works and then and and they always are just so keen to help other people with their sound shit because deep down they know no other human gives a fuck about sound as much as they do because it's a boring topic unless you like it it's fucking shit it's like me with all the science fiction books that I read I've never met a human in, in my 23 years on planet Earth that also enjoys reading science fiction books like that. And I'm desperate. I am fucking desperate to talk about space battle fucking books with with anyone in my life. So if, if, if I, if, if someone, basically what I'm saying is if science fiction books were like an industry that could make money, I would be so down to help anyone with their science fiction book needs. And that's what I feel like a sound cunt is like. Like, it's like as soon as they find anyone that has a remote interest in anything sound, any kind of basic sound knowledge, they're like, I can help. No, I don't want to help you. I just want someone to talk about this shit with it because I fucking love it. So my uncle is one of those sound nerds. Um, and he recommended me this camera, which is... Uh, what, what the fuck is this camera? It's a... Um, it's you know what it is. It's kind of like a GoPro, but made by a microphone company. It's made for filming live events, and it's got like a hectic microphone on it, and microphone inputs. Uh, it's called a it's called a Zoom. I think I got the. It's like a Zoom Q4N or H4N or whatever the. F- there's I don't know. I know there's the there's the number four in it, and then a couple of letters 
So, I don't know, <laughs> figure it out for yourself. Yeah, that's that's enough to figure it out on Google. Like, if you really want to know, I like I said, I'm not a sound cunt. I don't care about what it is. I just care about, does it work? And uh, is it going to enable me to film the podcast? So, I'm using a Zoom 4 and then two letters. Figure it out for yourself. <laughs> Fucking bing that shit. Um, and uh, I, I am led to believe that this camera has the ability to film for an hour so if it does then uh this podcast won't stop but i'm i'm monitoring it so if the because sometimes a lot of cameras for some reason it's some bullshit fucking tax law in america where if if like a like like my dslr for example my canon that i film all of my videos on it cannot film for more than 29 minutes and 29 seconds and that's not that's not a limitation that let's like not because it can't like we haven't figured out how to do that with a dslr that's literally just because the company has made it it's programmed to stop recording after 29 minutes because if it had the ability to record for more than half an hour in according to tax laws or some shit that's classified as a, a camcorder and then it costs more to make and sell them so it's it's literally just a fucking tax loophole that fucks me, and that's the why I haven't been able to record the podcast. But now I've got this camera, um, and it has microphone inputs as well because it's like you know it's it's one fucking thing to I'm trying to work out this chair. I'm at the radio station. I'm trying to make my chair lean back because I can't do the podcast unless I've got incredibly poor posture. Ah, oh, there we go. That'll give me scoliosis in about twenty years. But fuck, it's comfortable for the minute. <laughs> that's that is literally why the like every human ha- struggles with back problems when they're 40 is is we know we fucking know that that's how you get back problems by not sitting up straight but who actually does it no does anyone actually sit up straight i mean i fucking have to i'm six foot eight i i stand straight i force myself to do that because one time i saw a guy who was like six four hunched over and he looked like a fucking banana <laughs> Because <laughs> he was that long and curved. And I was like, fuck, I would look like an eggplant. What's a really long curved vegetable? Vegetable? Fruit? I don't fucking know. You get the idea. I'm getting distracted thinking of fruit now. Yeah, I saw some I saw some tall guy hunched over and he looked like shit. So I was like, fuck, that that like that's like I would look way worse than that. So I started standing up straight, but I can't I really struggle with sitting up straight, especially, you know, I, I, I feel like the the only reason why I do struggle so much with s- sitting up straight is because chairs aren't fucking built for people my size. Like, you know how, like, like ergonomic chairs, they'll have, like, curved backs where it'll curve where the small of your back is supposed to be, where, like, your spine naturally curves? For me, that feels worse because like my my spot is just higher <laughs> like 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 for you that's fucking perfect utilize that shit but for me that just hurts because that's not where my back bends so yeah i don't know i just can't sit up straight um i try to but then i was thinking like who no one really sits up straight it's the sitting that fucks us we just shouldn't be sitting all day every day like well, like in the radio station like the the office is just filled with people sitting at computers and well it's not even the radio station that's just every fucking office now everyone just sits down the whole day um and that that kills you man although in in at the station there's quite a few standing desks like this desk that I'm at now is a standing desk i think it actually has buttons you can raise the whole fucking thing where is it i'm going to oh there it is okay uh, but but oh you guys will actually be able to see this cuz this is videoed I'm just going to um, raise this now. Listen. You hear that shit? So here's the desk going up. Now, the I'm going to tell you that when the desk has stopped going up. So it's still going up. It's still raising. It's still raising. It's going up. It, uh, takes a, it takes a really long time to go up because it goes up incredibly high. Now, I would also like you to take note of how high this fucking desk is. Um, and... Where, where can I go with my microphone cable? How far can I go? Oh, the camera can't see me. I don't give a fuck. This is mainly a podcast, all right? The video is just a bonus. Um, I'm just getting the microphone over. Ah, uh, you know what? Fuck it. I can't, I can't explain it. 
I can't bring the microphones over here to show you cunts. What I'm trying to say is, even with how high this fucking desk is, it is still too low for me. <laughs> because the microphones uh, are just too, I don't know, just too low. So I can't do the show standing up. I have to sit down in every show. And another thing is, because me and Luke... Um, are such different heights. Like, he's a regular human's height, and I'm a fucking skyscraper. St- a standing desk for me is like a nipple desk for him. And and so we just can we can't do the show standing um, because I'm too tall. So, fucking awesome. But yeah, I was thinking about who actually stands up, sits up straight, and I, I figured it out. The only people who actually sit up straight are like um, Asian men. But not, not people who were born here. It's something about struggling with the English language and being Japanese that makes you sit up straight. It's incredible. And this is not a diss to Japanese people at all. I don't know how they figured it out. It must be that whole discipline thing. But every old Asian dude I see has looks like he has a fucking metal rod in his back. And it, it's not even like that. You, so you know how sometimes when you try and stand up straight or you try and sit up straight and you're like, fuck, that doesn't feel right. I don't think I even know how to sit up straight anymore. Like after fucking years of being incredibly lazy uh, with your posture, you don't even know how to do it without feeling weird. Like, do you know, you know that? Like you, ne- like you always see an, Asi- an old Asian dude and they have like textbook chiropractic, this is how the fuck, every human should sit posture and it's incredible i don't know who teaches them that but i would really like some of that shit that'd be the best like do you have, have you ever seen a baby man <laughs> of course you can of course you have no i mean like have you ever seen a baby move around like before they can talk before they really have any conscious idea of who they are or what they, as soon as they basically as soon as they start walking confidently like that's when they're when they're operating on instinct alone, and they don't even understand that they can be lazy with their posture or or figure out other things. They're just operating from exactly how it's wired into their brain. Like they have the best fucking posture ever, and and squat form, man, it's crazy. Like I saw my cousin had a baby recently. He's a toddler, and he walks around. He doesn't speak yet, but he was walking around with a building block, and then he dropped it on the ground. And he looked down on it, and, and instead of like bending over and picking it up like he normally would, he squat down, looked forward, and like picked it up and basically deadlifted it like with perfect form. And because I was a personal trainer, I was watching him do it, and I was like, fuck, that's the best deadlift form I've ever seen. And that cunt doesn't even know that he's doing it. Like, it's just, it's, at some point, we just lose that. It's like. You, you just you just figure out how to be lazy that's you know why that's how we're we're too fucking smart for our own good man like you never see a dog doing that actually my one of my dogs is super lazy they, they she sits lazy you know how some dogs sit and their legs are like directly next to each other and they're sitting right on their asshole and they've got like a straight diagonal back and they look forward and you're like that's a fucking good boy and then there's those other lazy dogs where they'll sit and they'll kind of sit diagonal where they'll, they're will they sitting on one of their legs. Do you know what I mean? Like the meaty bit of their leg, they'll just sit on that and lean diagonal. That's what mo- that's what one of my dogs does. And, and she's a fucking moron. <laughs> I swear, every dog that sits like that, you can tell they're fucking retarded. Um, yeah, so I'm, I'm uh, sitting here in the... Um, I'm sitting here at the station again because I I we I don't know why the fuck I'm here to be honest. Like we have a break from the show for two weeks. We took a break so I could focus on my special, and I was like, you know what? For these two weeks, I'm not going to work. And what have I done? Every single fucking day, I've done all of the other shit. The only difference is I'm just not also doing a radio show every day. Which, by the way, huge load off my back. That's fucking awesome. But it's not much of a break. I looked at myself in the mirror the other day. And I was like, mate, you look fuck. You look like shit. <laughs> you need to sleep. Um, so I'm trying to take it easy. Well, well, basically, you know what I've been doing? Basically, this whole week, I've been setting up next week so that I don't have to do anything. Um, so I've just been organizing all the people around the special and making sure that I have a video that will drop on Tuesday next week, where, but I don't have to film it or edit it and... 
you know, all, all that kind of shit. Um, just trying to, yeah, basically just trying to set myself up so I don't have to fucking stress about, oh, I haven't put a video out this week, because, I don't know. Some of you cunts are rude as fuck, <laughs> to be honest. Like, that's that's what it comes down to. It's like when you're an online entertainer or even a musician or anyone who gives away shit for free, it's like you take two weeks off and everyone's like, ooh, where's the shit I don't pay for? Give me it. It's like, fuck, I, it's like, dude, I like making it, okay? I enjoy making it. I'm not, I'm not trying to take anything away from you. I just haven't found the time. I just need a little bit of a rest Calm your fucking farm. I already know that you're subscribed to 30 other cunts on YouTube. Watch them while I don't put out two videos. It's not the end of the fucking world. I'm still doing my podcast, still doing my show. I'm still performing live, all right? Just watch me somewhere else. I'm making cancer on Snapchat. What more do you want, okay? Um, but on that note, I have filmed uh, an episode of Bi-Monthly Bull, and that's going to come out on Tuesday. It was the first episode that I filmed in the new storage unit. Uh, the new little studio space that I set up with um, with Patreon money, and uh, I gotta say it's it's fucking phenomenal. I went in there at like uh, what time did I go in? I went in at like fucking seven p.m. and I knocked it out in like forty minutes, and it was just great. There was nobody there. There were no distractions. You don't get internet in there, so I'm not fucking looking at my phone or getting distracted by anything. And the lighting is perfect because I don't have to fit the lights around my fucking bed and the washing basket and and just my life basically it's so good to finally not be filming shit in my bedroom like it's just the it's just the best shit ever um and also what's really great is there's no echo a lot of people were saying oh if you're filming in like a metal box there'll be heaps of echo and and when you're in there there is a lot of echo but because i'm using a lapel microphone just on my chest it doesn't pick up any of the echo at all so it sounds really good and it looks even better and um and it was it was just easier to film like what i did is i was at the station i wrote the whole video and then i just walked around the corner and i sat down and filmed it whereas when i was at home because it does take me a lot of time to research the stories and write the video Usually I, I would have to write one day, film another day, and then edit the next day, and it would take three days, and by then the news is kind of old, um, because I might be talking, when I wrote it, I might be talking about things that happened two days ago, so by the time that video actually fucking comes out, I'm talking about shit that's like five or six days old, and when you're doing a news satire show, it's not very current, it's not the, not ideal, basically, but now... And the reason why I, ca I had to film and write over two days is because I couldn't film at night. You know, my fucking parents are sleeping, my brother's in there, and, and also the neighbors. Like, you just don't want to be screaming cunt into the darkness at like 8 p.m. So, um, whereas now, you know, I go to a storage unit, nobody's fucking there because everyone locks up their dead bodies and their comic book collections and their motorbikes because their wife hates them, and they just leave. And they never come back for fucking five years until they stop paying for the bill, and then it gets auctioned off. Um, so it's awesome being in there. Um, and, uh, it's made me, uh, it made me enjoy filming because I used to, I used to not like filming just because it was such a fuck around to organize and figure out when everyone's going to be out of the house and, and all this kind of shit. It made it stressful, but now I can kind of waltz in, film it at fucking midnight if I wanted to, and it's fine. So, uh, yeah, expect some more videos from me. Bi-Monthly Bull's going to come out on Tuesday, and I just got sent the uh, New Zealand tour vlog from the guy who filmed it. So, oh, fuck, I might chuck that up on today, Sunday, if you listen to it on Sunday. Um, and, yeah, so back to another reason why I'm filming uh, this episode is... Um, I'm, I'm not going to... I'm, I'm going to film as many of these episodes as I can... I am not promising that every episode will be filmed. Some of them will be audio versions just because, I don't know, I might fucking forget my camera or I might be on tour or any number of things could be happening. And I, you know me, sometimes I record the fucking podcast on my phone in between going from one place to another place. So uh, I'm not going to promise that um, every episode from now will be filmed, but as many of them as possible will be filmed Um and now that we're at the station every day, I'm pretty confident that 90% of the episodes will be filmed from now. As, as long as this works. I mean, if I figure out that the audio is shit or, or this thing doesn't actually record for an hour, this will be the only filmed episode. But if all of this goes smoothly and, and it sounds good for the people listening to the audio, please do let me know how it sounds because you guys are the most, even though it is filmed, most people still listen to it on iTunes because you can't fucking 
watch YouTube while you're cleaning your room, basically. So let me know how it sounds um, and let me know how it looks. Uh, the visually wise, I'm not too fussed about how fucking good it looks. I'm not going to set up lights or anything or a set because, again, it's a podcast. It's me sitting in a fucking chair talking to myself. It doesn't need to look good. So this is just something for the YouTube cunts to, to watch. Um, and hopefully it all works out. And another reason why is if it's filmed, now I can actually release the video and the audio at the same time. Because how it used to work with Omni, which is the podcast server I use, you upload the, the fucking audio file online and then it goes out to everyone and then you have to turn it into a video and that takes like three hours. Then you got to download it and upload an hour-long f- fucking thing. And then by the time that happens, it's like... 9 p.m. on Sunday and I'm doing something else or I'm out or whatever the fuck so it was just a fuck around but now if I have the 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 video file like as soon as the podcast is done all I need to do is uh chuck it up and schedule it and uh so now I can give um for people who listen to the podcast I can give it to and support me on Patreon I can give you the audio version early and I can give you the video version early as well so yeah, just another thing for you Patreon cunts and for everybody watching on YouTube. Um, for everybody else who can't be fucked looking at me sitting in a chair talking to myself, <laughs> yeah, just listen to it on the train. I hope it should sound better though. Let me know. Um, oh, what else are we got to talk about? We got a, I got a, uh, I got a belt update, ladies and gentlemen. The uh, the notorious B E L T <laughs> has uh, returned. So if you've been following the podcast for the last couple of days. I've been absolutely fucking losing my mind trying to receive a nice belt. I, I got the radio show, and uh, every time I get a new job or I do something crazy or I finish a tour, any any anytime I, ma- I, I make a significant mood move, I like to reward myself with a dumb fucking thing. Um, uh, I, because, I don't know, I, fi- I find it motivates me, and it stops me from buying shit like, just all the time, you know what I mean, like, like, now, I, if I look at something nice, like an Xbox or something, I might, I actually want the new Wii, I'll be like, fuck, okay, I really want that fucking Wii, whatever, Wii Connect, or Wii fucking, I don't know, whatever the fuck they're calling their new thing, the Wii handheld gimmick device, where you can take it around with you, even though no one's actually gonna fucking do that shit, dude, imagine seeing someone playing with the new Wii on the train, (laughs) I'd fucking, I would get up out of my seat and slap it and fucking hit his cap off and call him a nerd. Like, I, like if you walk, dude, honestly, if you walked onto a fucking train carriage playing the portable Wii thing, it's like a fucking iPad with buttons on it. Dude, every single person on the train should turn into a generic American movie high school bully. Like, hey, nerd. Hey, nerd. What you got there? You an iPad? You on the phone to your mommy? And then they fucking pull his underwear up or flush his head down the toilet. Like, that's what should happen to any cunt who gets on a train playing with a new fucking Wii. (laughs) That being said, I do want to get that thing. And instead of just going out and fucking buying it, wasting money that I don't have, now I'm like, okay, well, if I can, uh, if I can do something, if I can achieve a goal that I've set for myself and it, that pays back with money, then I'll get it rather than just saving up and getting it anyway and then I'm not motivated to do better. I don't know. That's just how I fucking work it out. Just just makes me not spend money on dumb shit. But anyway, order this fucking belt. It's a nice belt. Um, a lot of people have been wondering what the belt is, who made the belt, what the belt looks like, uh, how much does the belt cost, where can they get the belt, uh, should I shame the company that made the belt? And look, I'm keeping it all under wraps, guys, for now. I know this is a big belt mystery. You guys have been abusing me about the belt. You want to know where the belt's from. You want to know the belt's name. You want to know the belt's model and product number and sizing measurements. I did tell you the sizing measurements, all right? 85, uh, that's what it is, okay? But I got a big fucking announcement to make, ladies and gentlemen. The belt has arrived. The belt arrived today. And I am currently wearing it. And I am so fucking happy. Let me tell you the saga of how this belt... uh, Let me tell you how I got the belt, alright? So, I've said belt so many times, it doesn't sound like a real word anymore. Say it with me. Belt, 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 belt. Doesn't sound fucking weird. Real, does it? (laughs) Anyway, so... uh, 
this the company that makes the belt they i ordered it and then they didn't have it and then they they sent me an email saying hey so this will be expected to ship between the 1st of december and the end of february next year so i was like well fuck that that sucks but then i i figured out i didn't read the email properly I thought they still had my money, and they were just they were just holding it for fucking three months until they made the whip the Vietnamese boy enough time so he made my one. Um, but I read the email again properly because I have this fucking problem. I'll read like the the I'll read the the um what do you call it the fucking subject line or the title? What are they called? I gotta look at my emails now. Fuck, are they called? You know, the thing that summarizes. Oh, subject. Okay. Oh, I kind of nailed it. It wasn't a subject line. It's subject, all right? Sorry, fucking idiot moment there. Forgot how to send an email. <laughs> I, what I do with emails is I read the subject line, and then I'll, I'll, I'll immediately categorize it into two things. I'll be like, oh, it's a, that's a good email. I need to pay attention to that. Or, fuck you, cunt. That, that's the only two kind of emails uh, email categories I have in my mind. So if I, if I get a fuck you cunt email, uh, I, I read the subject line, I get really fucking angry, and then I just skim over what is actually said in the email, and every time I miss important details, or, or just, I, I just see, or I just come across as a fucking idiot. Like, I'll respond to something really angrily. Like, a venue will be like, hey, so, you know, we can't, uh, we can't do the show on this day, and I'll be like, fuck do you say you can't and then they'll and i'll send off something and be like you have to do the show and, and then they'll come back to me and no, no 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 we said in the email we did we can do the show we just have to do it like this and i was like oh okay that actually wasn't i i read the subject line and got really angry at you i'm sorry <laughs> that's what happens and that's yeah that's my fucking email problem but anyway with this belt I read the subject line and it said something on the line of your shipment has been delayed, blah, blah. And then I skimmed through the fucking email. They said they would send it to me in February. Uh, and then I got really fucking angry and I didn't read the rest of it. And I yelled about it for three weeks in a row on this podcast. Anyway, so uh, a couple of days ago, I went back into the email, email and I read it properly. And... Uh, they told me that they, because I was, I was mad that they were going to send it in February, but they were holding on to my money. I was like, fuck you, give me my money back. Anyway, I read the email. They, they sent my money back. They, they gave me my money back and they were like, hey, so really sorry about this. Uh, we, we know you paid for your belt, but we didn't have enough of them. So we've put you on the wait list and we've refunded you your money and we will email you when it comes back in stock and then you can pay for it again. Otherwise, sorry about that. You can have your money back. And I was like, well, what the fuck? So now I had my money back and I was like, well, all right, fine. <laughs> all right, sweet. So I have my money back and then I just went online and bought it from somewhere else. <laughs> As I could have done fucking three weeks ago. I was just too much of a dumb cunt to figure out. I, was, you know, I wasn't even dumb. I knew that was an option. I was just so angry that I, I, I get swamped in my own anger. I'm like, oh, now I've, now there's only one solution and it's, there's only one thing and I'm going to, I'm going to fucking ruminate on this one problem that isn't going to be fixed and blame all of my life's issues on this fucking slow shipping belt. But, um, yeah, I just bought it from somewhere else and it came in like two days. <laughs> <laughs> I'm currently wearing it. I'm not going to uh, I'm not going to show you guys the belt. Uh, I'm figuring out uh the perfect time, and the perfect way and the perfect place to do a belt reveal. I might do it on an Instagram photo. Uh you know, in a couple of weeks time. I might wait till next year. I might wear it during my special. I don't know. Uh I'm just saying that I finally got my nice belt. I'm really happy about it and uh it's made me a better person on the inside. I've been wearing it now for uh, probably about 12 hours now and I'm I'm feeling really good. So uh I might do a belt reveal at some point, but we will see. Um at the moment I'm keeping the belt under wraps. Uh partly because I don't want to show it to you just yet, mostly because I think it's funny that you all want to see the belt, uh but I'm <laughs> I'm not showing you the belt, so look, guys. Uh, I, I'm a I'm a I'm a firm, but but unfair leader, 
and I'm not <laughs> letting you see the fucking belt because it amuses me, all right? You will see it at some point. Now, in every photo that I post, there's going to be like a million belt comments because I have... Okay, look. I have one belt, which is like a $30 fucking black, plain, boring belt. That's not the belt. That's the one that I wear all of the time. That's the only other belt I have. So you will notice this new belt if and when I decide to reveal it in a video or an Instagram post. But uh, for now, it's the Illuminati belt. It's undercover. It doesn't want to be seen. It's se it's a self-conscious belt, okay? It's it's uh, not feeling very belt delicious at the moment, so I am going to keep it hidden from you guys. But... um. At some point, I will reveal to you the uh, the size, color, shape, and uh, general appearance of the belt by, I don't know, wearing it, and you'll see it. <laughs> All right, so, uh, shall we get into miscellaneous bit at the end? I think we should. Give me one second, I've got to pull these emails up, and uh, we can get into the worst part of the podcast. All right, I'm back. So, uh, let me get these questions up here. If you don't know, Miscellaneous Bit at the End is the part, worst part of the podcast where I answer life advice questions from you cunts. So, if you have a question or if you have a funny story to tell about you being an arsehole or someone else being an arsehole or just something you think I would find humorous, send, in me, uh, send me an email to podcast at com. That is podcast at com. All right. So, uh... This one, the subject line, see, I remembered what a uh, subject line of an email is called. My ex is a psycho. So this one is going to be good. These ones are probably my favorite ones. All right. Sup, cunt. My name is... Oh. Dude, okay, if any fuck, any fucking... If one more fucking person emails me and tells me their real name... And then tells me, oh, call me this. Just don't write it, okay? Because I, I am like Ron fucking Burgundy. I will read your real name, bro. I'm not fucking around. The next, oi, the next person who says, hey, my name is this, but change my name if you read it. No, okay? I'm reading whatever fucking name you put in, all right? I'm not doing this cunt, but final warning, I'm sick of coming up with imaginary names because I'm very uncreative and all I can think of is Sam and Sarah, all right? So... This cunt, I'm calling, what's a shit name? Hayden. That's a shitty name. Or oh, actually, this dude's name is the worst fucking name. It's like it's worse than Hayden. I really want to say it. I'm not going to do that to the cunt because this story seems a bit personal. All right? But yeah, be warned. If you tell me your name in the email, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to read it. Okay? Just write, just say that. Don't even tell me you're using a fake name. Just say, hey, my name's Tom. All right? That's all. All right, my name is Fuckhead, but please change my name if you read this. All right, Michael. Uh, uh, no, Hayden, that's what, that's what I'm going to call you. All right, I have an ex-girlfriend whose name is whatever you want it to be. Oh, you fucking, he's got me twice, ladies and gentlemen. What a fuckhead. Um, Hayden and F Michelle, all right? That's a shitty girl's name, Michelle. Fucking sound like a hairdryer brand. <laughs> The Michelle 3000. Um, I have an ex-girlfriend whose name is Michelle and she has become stalkery as fuck. I'm currently 17 and I've just finished high school. I dated this girl, Michelle, for 16 months and it was pretty good, but we broke up about six months ago because she became the most boring cunt I have ever met. After we broke up, everything seemed to be fine until she asked me to hang out and I regrettably said yes. Yeah, you know what's going to happen? I haven't read this email, but I bet she's going to... Girls are so good at this and guys are so bad at turning this down. Is they'll, You'll break up with her and then she'll be like, oh, I just, I just, I just want to hang out. All I want to do is sit down and talk to you just as friends. Just hang out like old times. You know, I understand that we're broken up. But I just want to hang out. I just want to just relax with you. And, you know, we can just do whatever. I've got, I still have your hoodie. Okay. I kept your hoodie. I'm sorry about keeping your hoodie. I know you keep asking for it back. But if you just come over to my house, we can just relax. I'm not your girlfriend anymore. We're just friends. Uh, and I'm definitely not going to suck your dick. All right. And then nothing like, I'm not, I'm, I just, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not going to try. I'm not going to be like, eh, I'm not doing that. Okay. I'm not even going to think about it. It's, I just want to hang out. And then the guy will be like, yeah, you're all right, but we're, we're deaf, we're friends. So we just have a, a handshake and a conversation. And then his dick will be like, yeah, let's fuck it tonight, boys. But so, and, and then of course that's what happens. All right, let's, 
Let's see if I called it. Um, where are we? Asked me to hang out, and I regrettably said yes. This led to us having sex. Oh! This, what? This led to us having sex in the bushes at a park. That's so, that's so 17 years old, man. Fucking in the bushes at a park. Yeah, it wasn't a park. This led to us having sex in the bushes at a public park. You're, you're a, an animal. Don't ever let your children play on a playground because you know, right, when it's when it's 2 p.m. in the afternoon, that's toddler time and everyone's sliding down the slides and playing on the swings and going, Mommy, watch, watch this. And they jump like two feet and then mom has to pretend to be impressed. Wow, I really wish I wasn't fucking at home smoking cigarettes right now. Oh, I love hanging out with my kids. Fuck, I wonder what's on Oprah. Like, that's, that's, what, hap- that's what happens at 2 p.m. in the afternoon. But fucking at, at 3 a.m., Right, that's when everyone's smoking bongs and drinking goon on top of the slides. Oh, here's a good story. I remember in high school, uh, some chick I went to high school with uh, fucked someone else on the slide of a playground. Could you imagine fucking someone on a slide? Like that'd suck. That'd be the worst way to fuck someone ever. That's not. That's not like I, you know how I was talking about ergonomic chairs the other day, or well. 20 minutes ago, not the other day, it's still today, uh, that, fucking someone on the slide is like the most unergonomic place to fuck someone, when you think about it, cause, dude, do, do you reckon, do you reckon she fucked him on the top of the slide, and then went down, <laughs> no, dude, okay, do you reckon she sat at the bottom of the slide, like with her legs open, and then the guy got on top of the slide and went dick first, and then they tried to line it up, and that's... Couldn't you even go down a slide dick first? You'd, you'd really have to bend it. <laughs> you'd fucking give your dick a hernia trying to... <laughs> but what I'm saying is, don't don't let your kids go on the slide at 2 p.m. in the afternoon, because at 3 a.m. there's some fucking 17-year-old fucking someone on the bottom of it. All right, where are we? Um. Uh... This led to us having sex in the bushes at a public park. Blah, blah, blah. This continued to happen for the next month. Dude, you were fucking her in the bushes at a park for a month? What are you doing, man? We, this continued to happen for the next month until we realized that what we were doing was fucked. Dude, how does it take you more than two seconds of bush sex to figure out you probably shouldn't do that? This guy's... Both of you are fucking insane. Like, I would get... I, I, you know what? This is this is about as close as I could ever get to bush sex. I'd be walking down, and my girl would be like, Hey, do you want to go fuck in that bush? And I'd look at it, and I'd go, No. <laughs> That's as close as I'd fucking get to having sex in a bush. Like, I would look at the bush, and then, and then my brain would be like, Is that a good idea? No. And then I would just say, no, that's as close as I would ever get. But when you're 17, man, dude, just have sex in your house. Ask your parents if it's okay to fuck a girl in your house. Surely you can. That's what I did. I honestly, this is a weird story, man, but I honestly asked my parents if it was okay to fuck a girl in the house when I was like, I was like 18. That's when I first started having sex with girls. I, I I literally did it at the dinner table. Maybe I just have good parents. If I had good parents, I wouldn't say cunt so much. I don't know I had I had very relaxed parents, man. I, like to the point where I could literally bring up at the dinner table, "Hey, mum, I'm fucking girls. Can I do it in, in the house, please?" And then she would be like, "Hmm, I'll allow it." <laughs> yeah, I just bought it. I think it blew my brother's mind because well, he's three years younger than me. I was, I was eight, so he'd be 15, so I brought it up at the dinner, like it was like, like it was a family decision, should Lewis be allowed to fuck girls in the house, round table everyone, what are your votes, all right, dad, what do you think, well, I understand that my son's growing up and he wants to fuck girls, when I, when I was his age, I would have loved to fuck girls in my bedroom, but I had to fuck them in the bush, like poor Hayden, all right, I don't want my son to end up like a Hayden fucking girls in bushes for a month until he realizes it's a bad decision, all right? So my son is going to fuck girls in the bed. And then what do you think, mum? And then mum's like, hmm, I don't know if I want my son fucking girls in my house. 
but I also don't want my son fucking girls in a bush, so I'm voting yes. And then, what do you, what do you, <laughs> what do you think, uh, brother? And then my little brother will be like, what? You can fuck girls? That's insane, man. That's the best shit ever. I thought girls were just friends. You can put your dick in them? What? You can do it in the house? What the fuck? Man, I've been doing it in the bushes for ages. Yeah, like surely risking an embarrassing question with your parents is way, way less embarrassing than getting caught by the police fucking a 17-year-old in the bushes and then having the... Like, is that Otherwise, you just have the conversation with your parents at the fucking police station. Imagine that phone call. The cops would call... Or do you reckon they'd show up to your door like your kid was dead? I'd probably do the phone call. You don't want to freak mums out. You answer the phone, you're like, ring, ring. Hello? Yes, hello, is this uh, Mrs. Hayden? Yes! What's my, what's the, what's the, uh, the light of my life? My, my, my favorite son, my good boy been doing? Uh, this is the police. Oh, no! <laughs> what's he been doing? Well, ma'am, are you familiar with the bush? Yes! Are you familiar with fucking? Yes! That's how I made him. Well, He's been combining the two. Why is he fucking girls in a bush? <laughs> yes, we've arrested him. You're going to have to pick him up for the police station. And then your mom's just going to get there and fucking yell at you for, for rooting girls in a bush, man. I can't even... I can't... I just don't fuck girls in bushes. All right. It's not even going to be good either. It's, you can't even... You can't like... Yeah, do you like that, baby? I don't know! I've got fucking bushes in my anus! I can't... <laughs> I've got fucking dirt in my mouth. Of course it's not good. Man, fucking someone in a bush. I'm only halfway through this email. I keep getting distracted by hypothetical situations where your mum finds out you fuck girls in bushes. Maybe this, that's how this guy was conceived and she'd be proud of him. All right, anyway, so <laughs> what are we saying? Um, this continued for the next month until we realized that what we were doing was fucked. It took him a month to realize rooting girls in bushes wasn't the best idea. This guy's a cunt of genius. Fucking scientist email again. <laughs> All right, we stopped talking for a month and she came to my house and we hooked up. Oh, so, and both of you would have been like, dude. On a bed? This is so much better. Oh, man. There aren't... There's not any fucking leaves in my hair. We can actually do doggy style without my girlfriend ending up with... <laughs> with fucking tetanus because she knelt on a nail. This is the best. Uh, we hooked up. Uh, this happened a couple of times and we stopped talking again. Then she started to get creepy. She would see this is the this is the part of the email where Hayden thinks that this is the problem, but really, th his main problem is that he fucks girls in bushes, like or, or he dates girls that are willing to get fucked in a bush. Like if you, dude, if you're dating a woman and and you're like and you point at a bush and you go, hey baby, what do you think about fucking in that bush? If she says yes, run. She's insane. What kind of woman would like to get fucked in a bush? <laughs> <laughs> Just get the fuck out of that relationship. It's not healthy, man. I, I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna test my girlfriend actually next week. I'm gonna be like, hey, babe, you see that big bush? It's a nice bush, isn't it? She'll be like, yeah. Do you want to fuck in it? If she says yes, I'm single. <laughs> um. Uh, where are we? All right. She started to get creepy. She would randomly show up to my house. See my mum without me knowing. Oh, that's strange. Come to my school and constantly call me until I left class. She keeps saying that her life would be better without me, but then tries to have sex with me and send me messages. Man, you must have, like, so the best dick game on the planet if you can fuck a girl in the bushes and she she's like, man, that was, that was not shit. <laughs> That was an enjoyable experience. I would like to do that again. You must have, like, the best fucking dick game ever. I shouldn't say that. You're 17. Um, 
she keeps saying her life would be better without me, but then she tries to have sex with me and send me messages. I've told her that I don't love her anymore and that we will never get back together. We will never, ever, ever fuck in a bush again. We will never, ever, ever do anal in the bushes. You should send her that Taylor Swift song, man, but change the lyrics to... (laughs) <laughs> from getting back together to bushes. I've told her I don't love her anymore and we will never get back together, but she just won't go away. Cunt, can you please give me some advice on how to get rid of this crazy bitch? P.S. I would rather get her pregnant with triplets than listen to Miss Lady's bit at the end. <laughs> Have a shit one. Hayden. Um, look, man. You've, it's, you know what? You've, you've, you haven't broken up with her. This is your fucking problem, dude. You, you you think that you've broken up with her, but you're having sex with her in bushes. You haven't. You're still in a relationship. It's just mean and abusive now, where she stalks you and you tell her to fuck off and she's like, I hate you, but, you know, good dick. Like, you t- you're in a bad... Now you're just in a shitty relationship because you didn't break up with her properly. When you break up with someone, you stop talking to them because you cannot be friends afterwards. Because if you try to be friends afterwards... Next thing you know, your balls deep and and also in a bush, okay? At 3 a.m. next to the fucking swings. You, what you need to do is actually break up with her. Stop telling her, I'm not bra- I'm breaking up with you. I don't want to see you anymore. We're never getting back together. Stop doing that shit and just stop talking to her. That's all you do. It's fucking simple, man. You say, hey, I wanted to let you know Michelle or whatever, hairdryer, whatever the fuck. I forget the name that I gave her. Whatever her name was, Michelle, Michaela, whatever it is. Say, hey, um, seeing as we're not together anymore, I think it's a good thing that we don't talk anymore. I had a lot of fun with you in the bushes, but let's keep that in our memories because I, I don't know. I think that, that bush has seen enough of, enough of my cum, all right? And then you delete her phone number, you block her on every social media. Well, not block her, just defriend her. And if she keeps messaging you, then block her and block her number from calling you or texting you so you don't even read the shit. So she has no opportunity to hook you back in with some of that sweet bush pussy. <laughs> bush pussy. Fuck, that's, do you reckon that's what they, do you reckon that's what the aboriginals used to call sex? Because they called food like bush tucker. Do you reckon they called sex bush pussy? (laughs) Bush pussy. Oh, fuck. There we go. Amuse myself. Um, yeah, dude, you, you, you're you having this problem because you haven't broken up with her properly, alright? That's your fucking issue. So, break up with her properly and stop talking to her, and then your problem is solved. You don't have a girlfriend anymore, alright? What's the next... Ah, oh, I don't know. I didn't write down the next email. I'm gonna have to look it up. Dude, now that these podcasts are filmed, you're gonna actually see how unprofessional this shit is. Um. Where are we? Just look at my, I'm just looking at the the email subject lines. This is how I this is how I pick which email I'm gonna read. Psycho bitch sister. Mm, that's too similar to what we just did. Cunt of a boss. Mm, kidnapped cat. Oh, I like that one. Should we do kidnapped cat? Or girl got in contact with me but is sending me mixed messages. Nah, might do that one later. I like kidnapped cat. Let's do this one. What does this one say? This one. Okay. From someone called Will. Uh, hey Lewis, I have reason to believe that my cat has been stolen by the ice addict up the road. We picked a fucking good one, didn't we? Uh, I reason to believe my cat's been stolen by the ice addict up the road. I shouldn't laugh, this is fucking horrible. Um, uh, I think my cat's been stolen by the ice addict up the road that my mum's place is on, and I was wondering how you'd suggest getting it back. Is that it? I know. She's also, also, it's a lady. She's, oh, oh, that's, that's a little bit different. That's a little bit unusual. That's progressive. You you normally only see male crack addicts around. It's good to see that we're closing the gender gap on crack addicts. The gender crack gap. (laughs) Um, She's also likely the person that got petrol out of my mum's partner's car and loosened the nuts on his car wheels. Fuck, what a psycho. Yeah, it's definitely a woman, man. Something about crack and women that just turn them into murderers. 
Although it does it to men, though. It do- oh, that's a bit sexist. Men do turn into murderers when they're on crack, but they turn into, like, violent murderers. In my experience, whenever I hear a story about a, uh, a male crack head, he's like, fucking, ah, fuck, fucking, I'm going to He'll still stab you, and you know that you're going to get stabbed. But all the stories I've heard about female crack addicts is like, you don't know that you're about to die until you get on the M5 highway and you realize she's cut your brakes and you just fucking go off onto the <laughs> into the water. Um, it's more premeditated. That's what. So, so crack gives men the ability to stab someone on a train and then crack gives women the ability of like premeditated murder. The more you know, all right? That's my scientific opinion that I haven't even bothered to Google. Um, uh, okay, she's she's also likely the person that got petrol out of my mum's partner's car and loosened the nuts on his car wheels. I know this sounds like total bullshit, but she has been known to do this kind of thing. You see? Female crack addicts. Uh, one time she essentially kidnapped... Uh, kidnapped your brother's girlfriend's ex little sister or their neighbor. My brother's girlfriend's. Your, our oh our, I was like, I was gonna say yeah that definitely didn't happen to my brother's girlfriend's ex sister. <laughs> uh, one time she essentially kidnapped our brother's girlfriend's ex. Our brother's girlfriend's ex's little sister or their neighbor. I can't remember which. Dude, are you sure you're not the fucking crack addict? What was that sentence? Uh, They got the police involved. I considered breaking into the girl's house to get my cat back, but if I'm wrong, it's just a dick move. Plus the guy that lives lives there, her nephew, is a good bloke. (laughs) Is he? And I don't want to make his life any shitter than it already is, than it already would be having an ice addict living with you. Thanks, man. Love the content and looking forward to the comedy special. Thank you. Um, yeah, dude, if the if the, the crack addict's nephew was a good guy, why don't you just ask him? Say, hey, man, did, you, did your crack addict aunt steal my cat? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just ask him, man. That's what I would say. Just fucking ask him. That was a short one. Let me know, though. I'd love to know where your fucking cat is. Yeah, if he's a good guy, just ask him. Say, hey, I don't want to be uh, mean or I don't want you to assume that I'm being an asshole about this. But um, uh, as the entire neighborhood knows, your aunt is a fucking insane crack addict and my cat's missing. So, you know, I don't want to, I don't want to, what would you call it? I'm calling it like racially profiling, but drug habits. I I don't want to addict profile your aunt, but um, where the fuck's my cat? (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> Did she sell it for meth? Um, all right. <coughs> I'll do this one last one. I'm going to do Cunt of a Boss, and then I'm going to wrap this shit up. All right? Hey, Lewis. My name is e- e- E-O-I-N. And then he put in brackets Owen. No, it's not. Your name's not Owen, mate. It's spelt E-O-I-N. Your name's e o what? e o <laughs> Your name's fucking e o i n. Oh, I love all I love all your shit. It's been keeping me sane while going over se- overseas here in the UK. Thanks, Eoin. I, re- I appreciate it. I'm currently in the UK seeing family, and I got this job working in retail. Of course, your boss is a cunt. You work in retail. I'm pretty sure everyone who works in retail is a cunt, especially the people who have been there so long that they've been promoted because for some reason they think they're trapped when really they can just walk out that fucking door. Um. I got this job working retail, which is fine. I've had shitloads of jobs like it and, and fucking nailed every one of them. You're a, go- you're a retail go-getter. But this one sucks because the manager is the most boring and depressing cunt I've ever met. I told you. See, every cunt working in retail who's been there long enough to get promoted is a sad cunt. Because you would be a sad cunt folding jeans for the past five years. <laughs> What do you do? Oh, I fold jeans and wait for online shopping to kill my entire industry. What about you? Oh, I I don't know. Work in an office. Uh, <coughs> he's the most depressing cunt I've ever met. His name is Mark, of course. That's anyone called Mark's depressed. And he has one of those shit heads that finds the small he's oh, I thought I thought you, I thought you were saying he has a shit head. No, he is a shit head. He's one of those shitheads that find the smallest fucking detail to tell you off about regardless of how hard or well you actually work that day. Yeah, because that's the only part of his life that he feels like he has control over is, is, is your life. I hate those cunts. It's like, no, dude, 
don't be angry at me because I uh, I work here as well. All right, just it's your fault. Okay, if you don't like the job, go to uni, do something else, become a crack addict, kidnap someone's cat. All right, just do anything other than this, and and but stop abusing me because I didn't fucking fold the polo shirt the correct way so the logo is showing. All right, can't doesn't matter. You don't own the store. That's what gets me about people, especially working in like like shithole jobs like call centers. Because I worked in call centers. What always got me is like the management would really care. They'd be like, hey, Lewis, you didn't try and upsell that person. I just want to be like, yes, yeah, so? You're not making any more fucking money if I do that. Neither am I. If you want me to sell someone more shit, how about you reward me for doing it instead of punishing me for not doing it? How about that, you fuckhead? If, if, look, I would understand if me selling some insurance policy would make you more money. I would at least kind of understand it, but you don't even own this business, cunt. You're just me if I fucked up my life and couldn't leave the call center, so I got promoted to manager, all right? Shut up. You don't get paid more money if I upsell something, so how about you just don't care, and then management won't be able to tell you to care. Sorry, I just remembered working in a call center. I, that happens like every month where I've, I have flashbacks of being in a fucking chair and then being like, well, you didn't upsell that customer. But I'm like, yeah, but I'm customer service, you dog. All right. They had a problem. I helped them with it. And they, they didn't say, hey, uh, do you have any insurance policies? No, they didn't ask that. That's not customer service. If you employed me as a salesperson, then yeah, fucking oath. I'll sell some shit. I did sales, I enjoyed it, but I was hired as customer service, not, hey, uh, now that I've fixed your problem, can I offer you a plan that I know is a rip-off? Anyway. Anyway, this is a fucking email. Uh, he, <coughs> he finds the smallest detail to tell you off about, regardless of how hard or how well you work that day. And he follows company policy to the fucking letter. Yeah, shit cunt. And like, not even the owner does that. You know, like, I have a company policy and I don't follow that shit. I'm like, I upload a video every week and I fucking don't. <laughs> um, he never gives any leeway to anyone or anything, no matter the situation. He tried to dock me my first month's pay on my third day because not enough customers were going home in their own time and making a new account on the company website and filling out a three-page form, giving me a compliment on how nice I was. Yeah, who the fuck's going to do that? He also has one of those fucked default Sims faces. <laughs> but if you turn the depression and fuck with to max, that's very funny. Uh, what is the best way to tell him he's a cunt? On the day that I quit, I want to tell him what a cunt he is, but I couldn't come up with anything funny or cool, so I decided to ask you, seeing as you're an expert at getting angry at people and calling them cunts. Cheers. Keep up the sick work and have a shit one. Okay. All right. This is my specialty. I'm excited because I know exactly how to do it, all right? If you want to, if you really want to fuck, this is what I did to one job. If you really, really want to fuck with the work, with the workplace, all right? You don't, you don't be, don't be mean to one person, all right? Don't, that's, that's easy, okay? You could, you could quit this job and you could write a whole page, a note on why this guy's a cunt, attack his every insecurity and you could give it to him and he would read it and he might get angry, but then he'll forget about it, all right? That's not, that's amateur, okay? Anyone can do that. It doesn't have a lasting effect. If you really want to fucking ruin this business, and ruin the workplace environment for one cunt, all right? Listen to this. I think I might have told this story before, but just listen to this fucking story and and learn from the master of ruining days, all right? <coughs> let, me, let me take you back. I worked in a, uh, in a call center, and my manager was a cunt. She was an asshole. She was one of those people that were unhappy with their lives. Sounds like this guy. Unhappy with their own personal choices, and the only way they felt felt like they were in control is by micromanaging people under them. Um, <laughs> and she had this fucking mustache that everyone knew was there. And you know that she knew, it was, like she was like 40, she had kids. And she had this little mustache that was always there. And sometimes she would wax it. Sometimes it wouldn't show up to work. <laughs> sometimes it'd take a day off, all right? But not every time, all right? So... It was obvious that it was something that 
that she was insecure about. This is really mean, by the way. I'm, I'm telling this story, and I want you to know that I am fully aware of how fucking mean this is and how uh, petty it is, but I am a mean, petty person, all right? And, and, and that's what you're here to learn, okay? You didn't come here to listen to the fucking good, the good book, all right? Jesus helping you out. You came, you came to King Cunt, and King Cunt says, insecurities are the best way to get back at someone who annoyed you slightly, okay? So she had this mustache that was there some days, there most days, sometimes gone. So she would like, basically, she'd say, she'd shave the stash on special occasions. <laughs> um, and so what, anyway, so basically, I knew it was there, she knew it was there, and she was obviously, it was obviously a thing that she, she didn't like, but she was also just left it there because she had it her whole life, so she was, just couldn't be fucked getting rid of it all the time. So what I did, is they fired me, actually. Um, they fired me uh, because I was a shit employee and also because they found out about the online thing and they were very scared of it. So I thought, you know what? These guys have been cunts to me. I've hated working here. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to leave. I'm going to leave a disaster. You know when, uh, you know when uh, America nuked Hiroshima, like Japan, and there was like that huge explosion and everyone died? So there was that, that bit was fucked, but what's really fucked them is like the, tw the, the 300 year radioactive zone where nothing can grow and no one can live. Like you want to drop the bomb and then leave the zone, like the radiation zone that fucks it up even when you're not there. Like the bomb, the bomb doesn't matter anymore. The bomb happened, the bomb is over, the explosion doesn't matter. It's the aftermath of the shit that's really fucked up that whole place. So I dropped Hiroshima in the meeting when they were firing me. Because I kind of knew it was coming. I knew they, were f they, they got me to a meeting to head office. And I, knew it was, I knew it was coming. So I, w I came prepared, all right? And uh, there was my manager with the mustache and then her manager, who was a real cunt to me as well. Um, and they clearly didn't really get along. They, but they were trying, you know? They banded together to fire me. And I thought, this is what I'm going to ruin. I'm going to destroy the dynamic between my manager and her manager. And, and her manager is impossible to replace. So, you know, that's going to fuck with the, the business at large. So they tried to, they fired me. And, um, <clears throat> and then the, the big manager left the room. And then I was stuck there with my manager. And she was pretending like she was the good, they did good cop, bad cop. But I knew they were both cunts. And I'm there with my manager. And um, I was like, hey, I forget her name. Hey, fucking, uh... What's a woman's name? As if I can't remember a woman's name. Fucking Kirsty. Hey, Kirsty. That's the best I could come up with. Anyway, so I'm just in the room with Kirsty, and I'm like, hey, um, now that uh, your manager's gone uh, and I don't work here anymore, I wanted to let you know um, because everyone in the office has been laughing about this and i think that it's really mean to you and by the way this was not true at all um and and she was like what what do you mean and i said well your manager is always making fun of your mustache um and she always jokes about it with other employees and uh she makes sure that nobody tells you about it because she thinks it's really funny that we all laugh at your mustache and I wasn't going to say anything because I didn't want to get in trouble. But now that I don't work here anymore, I just wanted to let you know that that's happening. And then I, and that was the nuke. <laughs> that was the fucking bomb. And then I left. And, and from what I heard, <laughs> their fucking dynamic was destroyed. Fucking ruined. Because... My manager thought that her manager was laughing about her fucking mustache to all of the employees and it fucking ruined that entire dynamic and everything within that area of business crumbled because they were now incredibly hostile to one another. Because one with the mustache thought her boss was a fucking bitch for laughing about her mustache and her boss thought she was fucking insane because she wasn't laughing about her mustache at all. So that was, uh, that, that's how you fucking, that's how you really fuck with the business, man. You drop, you drop a nuke.
So if this guy has a boss or if this guy has a co-worker, you should just pick out his biggest flaw or something that you know that he's self-conscious about and tell him that someone else is laughing about it and act like you're doing it as a favor to him. Don't just, don't call him a cunt because he'll be like, oh, that guy was an asshole. Glad I fired him. I won. Just ruin the dynamic for everyone else. And that's how, I'm not saying it's a good thing. Every now and then I think back on that and sometimes I laugh, but a lot of the time I go, that was, that was really rude and you shouldn't have done that and you shouldn't tell people about the podcast. But then I, then I, then I think, nah, it's pretty fucking funny though, isn't it? <laughs> so yeah, that's, uh, that's my advice, man. If you really want to fuck with this guy, I mean, you shouldn't, don't do it. You shouldn't, definitely shouldn't do it. But if you are going to do it, do it properly. Uh, that's that's my motto. If like, don't do bad things. But if you are gonna do bad things, you might as well go balls deep and you know do do that bad thing in a fucking bush. That's what I say. All right. So that's the end of the podcast, guys. Thank you very much for listening. If you want to send me an email, if you have a story or life advice, uh, podcast at loosebeers dot com. Also. Um, the, I'm recording this on Friday, so all of the Patreon people will have heard this on Friday night, um, and, uh, yeah, everyone else can watch the video early too, so if you want to catch, uh, early episodes of the podcast or watch the video early, consider supporting me on Patreon, it makes a huge difference, and it allows me to upgrade shit, so, you know, pretty soon maybe I can upload the, ca- up- upgrade the camera, if you guys like this, to the people watching on YouTube, leave a comment, let me know what you think about this, I know it's not the best camera in the world, but it's the only one I could find that could record for an hour, and wasn't going to cost like $3,000 or something stupid, so... Um, I hope uh, it, it sounded good. I hope it looked good, and I hope you enjoyed it. Also, my um, my comedy special is next weekend, Friday and Saturday, November 17 and 18. I'm so excited for this, man. I've never been more excited for anything in my life. I know it's going to be the best show that I've ever done in my career, and uh, there are only 40 tickets left to um, to the show. So book now if you're coming and uh, they're all good seats. It looks shit on the Ticketek seating map. I don't like how they've laid it out, but I've been there. All of them are good seats. All the shitty seats are blocked out because that's where we're putting the cameras. So, <coughs> yeah, 40 seats left. Book now. They're only 25 bucks. It's all ages, and I would really love to see you there because it's going to be the best thing I've ever done, all right? And I'm very excited about it. Um, next week's podcast uh, might be late. I don't really know. Um, because I'm trying not to think about videos and stuff and podcasts and shit. So I'm going to try and do it on Sunday or after the Saturday show. But if I don't get to it, advance my apologies. But I'm sure you understand why, because I'm focusing on the special and I need to nail this thing. So, woo! I'm just fucking excited to do this special. All right, thank you very much for watching, guys. Uh, See you at the special and have an incredibly shit one.